the Undercroft has been a perfect place to sneak off to, away from prying eyes, and even practice otherwise forbidden spells. Really? Like what? Shadow's quest line, that's Sebastian's quest line in the game, is either the best quest line or it's the worst. And only because of an opportunity they had that they kind of squandered as writers. It has some really relatable issues. It has a small cast of characters, which I think makes the whole thing feel a little bit more intimate. It has a great reward for the player in that you get these incredible, powerful curses that are a big focal point in the books. And, you know, the fandom that goes along with anything that's a little edgy or a little taboo. We're going to take a look at this quest line. Hit the like if you enjoyed this. Uh, if this was terrible, hit the dislike. I'm going to let you know now, there's going to be a lot of spoilers. A lot of spoilers. So if you don't want to watch this right now, you want to come back later and watch something else that we've done, that's fine. Uh, we'll go ahead. In the game, the Dark Arts curses are all learned through completing one specific quest line. That of Sebastian Sallow. Sebastian Sallow ends up being one of the closest friends and classmates of the protagonist in Hogwarts Legacy. Their friendship starts innocently enough after a duel in their first day of defense against the Dark Arts class. Recognizing and having respect for a gifted classmate, Sallow invites the protagonist to a secret dueling club the school has, and as the two grow closer, Sallow confides and trusts the protagonist. Every successful Harry Potter story needs to center around an orphan with a troubled home life, and Sebastian Sallow does not disappoint. Much like Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort before him, Sebastian Sallow is growing up without his parents' guidance. Rough home life? He's begrudgingly living under the care of his Uncle Solomon, a retired Auror who's struggling with his own set of issues. He didn't part ways with them well from what I understand. He won't say but I believe his strong aversion to dark magic has something to do with his time there. Anne thinks he once decided to fight fire with fire, so to speak, and resorted to using an unforgivable curse and fight against dark wizards. At least that's what she thought she heard. When he realized what his job had led him to become, he left rather abruptly. Solomon and others are constantly putting down Sebastian for being too much like his parents. They are my stubborn brother's children, especially Sebastian. Which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you hear about how they perished. Sebastian doesn't even realize it, but he's as irresponsible and reckless now as his parents were years ago. It's why they died. Mr. and Mrs. Sallow were professors, spent nearly every waking moment in the cellar library, noses buried in books. Anne and Sebastian were upstairs when it happened. They heard a sudden crash and ran downstairs, but it was too late. Their parents had crumpled to the floor. A defect with the lamp in the cellar caused the room to fill with an undetectable toxin. They apparently had the bad quality of not being able to notice an undetectable gas leak in their own home. But the writers did throw in a nice little wrinkle to his character that is a new one for the series and serves to make his story all that more compelling. He has a twin sister, Anne. Anne is the last bit of family that Sebastian has left. And when she's cursed by goblins with no tangible cures in sight, Sebastian takes it upon himself to find one. Sebastian's quest for a cure takes him down a dark road, and he's accompanied by the protagonist and Ominous Gaunt, the trio of friends that are basically necessary to tell a successful story in the Harry Potter universe. It's not until you raid the library's restricted section together, which Sebastian takes the heat for, that we discover how Sebastian actually views his friendships. I like having friends who are in my debt. Now go. Good luck in your search. While the protagonist's motivation to complete the questline may be to wield the unforgivable curses, Sebastian sees an opportunity to use your proficiency in ancient magic to further his own goals. This also requires the help of his oldest friend, Ominous Gaunt. Ominous Gaunt is Sebastian's longest-held friend. The two grew up together, and Ominous serves as both a stark contrast to Sebastian's character and a foil to his journey accompanying the crew, but constantly attempting to get Sebastian to stop his dark journey. 
Ominous Gun is both a descendant of Salazar Slytherin and is also from the same family that would later spawn Lord Voldemort. While Sebastian's legal guardian is an Auror who directly opposes dark magic, Ominous came from a family of dark wizards. In the story, Ominous is blind while Sebastian has his vision, and yet Ominous seems more than capable of seeing the path his friend is on while Sebastian is only capable of tunnel vision. I think it's also worth noting that while Sebastian has said he views keeping his friends indebted to him as a positive, this doesn't stop at the protagonist, and he mentions how he plans to continue to use Ominous as well. Ominous trusts me, and more often than not, he winds up listening to me. I'll remind him of that when I follow up about the scriptorium. There is no cure! When will you accept that? Never! I can never accept it! <laughs> Sebastian won't stop searching for a cure, and while the protagonist is complicit in every step of the way, when it comes to the unforgivable curses, Sebastian makes one thing very clear. As with all unforgivables, you have to mean it. Which I take to mean that Sebastian has full agency over his own decisions, even if the protagonist is maybe steering him in the wrong direction. And sometimes the steering is incredibly heavy-handed. You'd understand. I did do the right thing. You did. I would have done the same if I knew how. I could teach you. Things come to a head when Sebastian summons an army of Inferi and plans to make a sacrifice in the catacomb to save his sister Anne. Until Solomon shows up. And, but this will allow me to control it. Just as I can control the Inferi. Control? I had to fight the Inferi all the way. What have the two of you done? Accio Relic! The Relic! After a brief battle, Sebastian does maybe the most shocking thing I've seen in the game. She cannot be healed, Sebastian! You must stop! Ah, I won't let her suffer! Even with all the steering we've done, I think it's worth noting he is far more upset about his sister destroying a relic of Salazar Slytherins at this point than killing his own uncle. Then he proceeds to rationalize his actions, albeit with a little help, and just dips on the entire situation, all while pushing away the person he claimed to care for most. Why wouldn't you stop? I was calling after you. Anne won't survive this. She's withering away, inside and out. Solomon's never been there for us, not really. He gave up on Anne. I'll never give up on her. You saw him, didn't you? He was going to ruin her life. He attacked us. I, I had to use the killing curse. You know I did. At this point, you are offered the opportunity to convince Ominous to either go to the authorities or let Sebastian off, saying there's no chance he's going to do this again. And if you turn him in, which is probably the right thing to do, you're not going to get to tell him about the twist that goblins were not the ones responsible for cursing his sister. And it feels like the story is left incomplete. It wasn't one of Ranrock's loyalists who cursed Anne. It was Rookwood. It was Rookwood all along. This, this can't be. It was the loyalists. It's always been them. The night Anne was cursed, all she saw were goblins. Once Rookwood allied with Ranrock, Isadora's estate became of interest to them both. That's why Rookwood was there the night Anne was cursed. He was working with Ranrock. When he saw your sister, well, he didn't want anyone to know. So he cursed her. And she's never been the same. So cruel. 
Rookwood deserved what he got. Thank you for telling me. It wasn't a goblin. I suppose I owe you an apology. But there's also very little payoff to his response. Kind of makes me wish I'd had him committed. Let us know what you thought, and we'll see you in the next one.